So let's continue. Um, thank you very much, Herman, for your keynote and uh, for creating the conditions for me to uh, to join a warm bot <laughs> and to move a little bit deeper with you into how can we make it practical this kind of thinking, this kind of framing, this kind of eco economy. Because we are in a shift, shift uh, momentum, and it can take ten years, twenty years. We don't know. We can only see it backwards. Um, my name is uh, Dennis Kerkhoven. Um, I studied uh, in uh, in Tilburg University. Um, circles uh, studies. So my way of thinking is about complexity and sy systems. I'm also a uh, visiting uh, a teacher at Nairo uh, University about complexity. And complexity is, is very different from that things are complicated. Complexity is about human uh, perspectives. So I will guide you in this case study uh, through. Uh, a very practical um, case called the food motor in the center of the Netherlands. Um, and my way of thinking is always about what are the conditions for these kinds of value creation um, businesses. So I will start in my presentation, in my case study, from a more market perspective. And then I dive really deep into the uh, the case, and afterwards uh, you can ask questions because I already received some questions. Um, but I always start with yes. When I when I start. My colleagues at, um, for example, other, other uh, universities, I always show this uh, movie clip from uh, Beautiful Mind. It's about game theory. I hope you, uh, you have you seen this uh, movie. It's about governing dynamics. And when I look at markets, and also uh, Hamel has already mentioned, we always look at risk, return, and impact. So, I really like to ask you to look at this short movie clip. <coughs>
someone sees what they're doing on their own, even though it's not. Something got out of the cell. Something got out of the cell. So ten years later, John Nash received the Nobel Prize for Economics and uh, also for math. From, uh, math. So he's really, he was really smart, especially when you look at how game theory is, is working. Yeah, the, the Nash equilibrium that you have uh, already in your classroom. It's, uh, it's important. Um, I work with multi stakeholders because whole systems is really about government, it's about business, it's about civil society, uh, finance institutions, it's about knowledge institutions like uh, like uh, like this university and they interact <coughs> with each other and they create value um, and they if you look from the back from the from outside you look and you see that they always look at risk return and impact and Harold already mentioned That we, that there's a conductive, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, there's always a crisis and also a next crisis. So, from my perspective, it's really important to deal with uncertainties. And uncertainties in, in, the, in an economy, they're always there. And we try to, to, to get rid of these uncertainties, but it's, it's, it's normal. So we, we need to deal with them. And we have all kinds of levels of uncertainties. Uh, if there is a, a future that, that's, uh, that's, that's clear, until a true uncertainty, there are possible outcomes, possible futures. And now we are really on level four. Multiple crises, multiple uncertainties, and that's reality. That's okay. And we need to deal with it. From a risk um, uh, perspective, this is a really interesting um, white paper uh, on uh, integ an integrated approach on how do we see risk. And there are four layers of, of risk, simple risk. You can manage it by routines. A simple, we, we know the risk, but the Risks are also can also be created by complexity, and then you bring in experts. You look at resiliency, uh, the, the ability to to deal with uh, with with, uh, with like 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 COVID. Eh? That, that's that's a beautiful ex example, and you focus on can we create robustness? Can we create uh, a, a way that we really can walk? The risk. But there are also risks created by uncertainty. And then we need precautions and empowerment, empowerment of resiliency. That's, and the last one is really what's happening now. It's a risk created by ambiguity and multiple perspectives. But the SDGs are also multiple perspective on reality and there's a risk part also an opportunity part and then what you really need on that fourth layer is conflict mediation a support base dialogue and connection on a high level and that's if you look at these kinds of risks i will tra translate them to a very practical case in this case too. We are creating and getting more markets fit for purpose. And we are act as a platform to create a trusted space for capital, science and education, government, citizens and business. 
And the currency is trust. And there's a beautiful uh, world behind trust. Because normally we see trust only from a compliance perspective. But if I can, can I trust you? Can I trust myself? How do we cooperate? That's 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 diff a different perspective. Going to the center of the Netherlands, this is a one example we created in the last 10 years in cooperation in a trusted space. We created wind farms owned for 50% by civil society. <coughs> After EBITDA, we created a fund that creates cash flow into, the, into that region. Value creation also for that region. We create uh, multiple uh, values with wind farms, but also solar farms owned by the civil society. So it's not extracting, it's regenerating. This is an energy example. And this is uh, our, one of our former SDs of Veldhoven. She was, she was opening our recharging, also owned by the civil society, a recharging place that's creating also a buffer, a battery, for uh, a neighborhood. So that's really innovative. Innovation that's creating multiple value. That's how we can reframe and restructure our, our new economy. And maybe you have heard a lot about uh, a new economy. And there's a lot of buzz on these, all these kinds of uh, things. It's about the donut economy. Who has, has heard, heard from my donut, donut economy? Yeah, escape. Uh, the well being, the commons good economy, the regenerative economy, and commons economy, economics, uh, local economics, bio regional economics, and the circular economy. And um, one of the key uh, uh, professors also on this university. Lance Wolfenberg, he is now, he really sees that in the complexity of all the uncertainties, the essence of the, the economy we need to reshape is about relations. Relations, also what, what Ham was mentioning, between stakeholders, different kinds of uh, uh, interest, and uh, with, with, with new values and new ways of, of what's the real purpose of our value creation. Because our, per, our current markets, and I work a lot with also the authorities, the financial markets, but also on the, 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 the good markets, are not fit for purpose. They focus on the lowest price and maximizing of the competition. And the competition can be good, like in the, in the movie, but we need to balance the competition because it do not harm is really important for, uh, for, for that. But creating value, you need to cooperate. And also you need to work on, on the true price, for example, because otherwise there will be a collateral damage. And you can see it in the daily, uh, daily newspaper that our uh, financial uh, markets are volatile, but also our energy markets are volatile. So it's, 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 it's in our face now. Yeah. Um, it's really hard for you to buy a house, your generation, yeah, because uh, uh, there, there's speculation in these markets. It's not balanced. If you go to, for example, uh, Austria, there's a policy to have a balanced uh, real estate market. That's beautiful. So that, so that you can have affordable uh, houses. Um, yeah, we, we see it on the gas prices, for example. But also the food. Uh, our food system is high volatile, and these markets are not fit for purpose. 
So we need to reshape them. Not get rid of them, but to, uh, like a uh, uh, painting of John Nash, include something else to make it better. With, uh, with one purpose, to create resilience. Uh, our our market systems are not uh, not fit for purpose. And if you look at these SDG, this is from the Resilience Institute from Stockholm. What they look at that that you need to on different uh, um, uh, SDGs, they are a precondition for the next uh, SDGs. So, uh, for example, the biosphere needs to be resilient. To move to the society and to the economy. And for me, if you look at the different layers of the SDGs, it's like building a cathedral. Ever been to uh, like La Sagrada Familia? How many years? And it's still not finished. Huh? Yes, it's very long. Uh, looking from an architect perspective in reshaping and relating an, an, a new economy, it takes long. You can start today. Uh, but it takes a long uh, uh, horizon. And to deal with such an, such an agenda, um, for me, what I've learned in the last 10 years by doing and creating a new economy is uh, to uh, work on peace and partnerships. They are the accelerator of uh, creating the new economy. And when I first was being asked to, to talk about <coughs> the 16, I was really wondering me about peace. And then I talked about how we create in a region a new economy. And what, what emerged, it was really about the rule of law. And if you look at, at our, at our um, uh, financial system, it's, it's really in, in, in a legal part. It's really a legal issue. And you have the rule of law, but you have also the spirit of the law. The first one is uh, really on, on, on rules, <coughs> the other one is more on the principles, uh, principle based. And the Netherlands was for more than uh, 20 years ago so flexible that they were principle based in the whole economy and how also corporates were, were behaving. So to balance again, also uh, Herman was mentioning, in a rule-based look at compliance and principle-based, that's a learning space, also your question eh, about what's, how to move forward, a more principle-based, that's creating space. And there's a, there's a practical uh, um, roadmap for that. And it's from the World Economic Forum. And if you look at SDG 16, there are, they are interweaved with all kinds of um, root causes of conflict. And one of the uh, issues that are really on materials, resources, uh, energy, can we fulfill in our basic needs on food? It's really actionable now. So our ability to, ex to have access, affordable access to sustainable and regenerative basic needs like housing, like food, energy. That's 
that's the key point for for um, FTP 16 because then there's more st stability and more peace so we need to shift our um, uh, our current markets to markets more fit for purpose and we need to uh, to, to do it in a learning way because you cannot shift from uh, system A to system B. You need to create space for learning. This is a, um, and you need to have to involve the industry, the government, NGOs, financial institutions, research institutions. They are all part of these market change. And in Europe, we have two market uh, playbooks, playbooks. The first one is the international uh, open market. International, and there's, there's, it's really about competition. It's really about um, uh, uh, creating uh, a an, 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 uh, an legal but also equal playing field. There are a number of other playbooks in Europe. And it's about Europe of the regions. That's a transition playbook for markets, for market creation. And it's used in the, the shift from the, uh, in the, in the late uh, also this, this century, uh, the shift from communism to market uh, economy. But also it's, it's used in the, in the, especially in the north of, uh, of Italy and Spain. It's a transition playbook. So that's, we have that in mind, that's really important. To move an, a, to a new market, it's about conscious shift, different approaches of value, also what, uh, what Herman was mentioning, but also regenerative action but to make it tangible, and that's, that's where the case comes in. And because there, what's happening now from taxonom taxonomies, all kinds of sustainable rules will uh, come to, uh, to uh, companies, business, um, and they will see it as do not harm. That's the, the, the perspective of, uh, of sustainability. But that's not giving energy. And also what Herman was saying, it's about, it's not about regeneration, it's not about creating uh, a, a value for future generations. So we, we need to shift to, an, to another way of thinking uh, because you cannot solve problems on the stage on the same level of consciousness and thinking that where it, 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 uh, it emerged. So I move to the region of the Netherlands. It's uh, the Betuwe. It's, uh, it's in the center of the Netherlands. It's where all the fruit trees are. And we started a case almost 10 years ago. Also, it is the same area where we have wind farms. In this area, there was a, a, a potential crisis because uh, there was a lot of labor depending on, uh, on, on fruit production, uh, apples, pears, uh, all kinds of fruit. They are using a lot of um, uh, toxic uh, uh, ingredients. The the soil was really poor, and the tech and and the emerging uh, taxonomies from the European uh, Union, they were were a potential risk for the BIS model. So we needed to to shift to a to a new way of thinking because there was a emerging crisis. So what we did is to create 
een the first supply chain cooperation and um, it was to come to convert it was the the, the mission was to uh, to to create an um, a product and a system a market system that was fit for purpose and a product that was based on waste because normally in a linear economy we, uh, we 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 produce we take we make and we waste that that's the, the from a circular and regenerative perspective you create uh, value for uh, for 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 a case but that's a different approach and i will come to that uh, later on so to make it real tangible um yeah we created an apple cider apple cider made made from uh, apples who were not fit for their market because they were not so beautiful and they look like uh, they look like this and and uh, um, uh, Albert Heijn doesn't like this consumers don't like it but the intrinsic value of this apple is 100 100%. So we didn't see it as waste, we saw it as valuable. And we said, don't get rid of these uh, these uh, these apples. Let's use them and to and to uh, to bring it in a, in a circular economy, a circular system. So in 2016, a couple of people started with the Krenkelaar. And the Krenkelaar was an apple cider made of these apples to upcycle the value. And it's not about the, the only the, the price or the, the euro, it's about creating value and multiple value. So it's based on a circular economy and a regenerative agriculture. Uh, um, agriculture in a regional chain cooperative. The first in the Netherlands. And if you look at a chain cooperative, you you have the producer, also the consumer, and everything in between in one system. So you can deal with price, with qualities, and you can act like a market, a mini market. That's equitable. So we thought that's also an opportunity to make it tangible. And here you have some pictures. So this, this was the first stage, and this is how it uh, should look to create more biodiversity, because that's one of the, the purposes. And, uh, uh, Herman was already see, uh, mentioning from a financial perspective, assets, they have, there's, a, there's a real essence for bio, bio, biodiversity. So can we co combine biodiversity regeneration of soil and a beautiful product uh, and it's, it's a price winning product yeah. and the dream was for this um, um, uh, fruit motor to really shift from a industrial landscape to a more regenerative landscape that's healthy for nature, healthy for people, attracting people to come into nature, and it's really creating value for, for the asset because these assets have more value than these assets. They need more inputs, fertilizers. They are not regenerative. They are not self-supporting, and these kinds of you need to to maintain these kinds of uh, uh, landscapes. But it's 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 cheaper, and it's creating all kinds of other uh, value creation. 
2017, they uh, they make it make it really um, uh, tangible, and, to, and also to intertwine it with the national B strategy, uh, because if you create a new market, you the the policies also one of the questions. It's really important to intertwine it with a new govern governing si system, uh, uh, also on a, on a valuing, but also on policies. So you need to cooperate. And uh, they, they start by pro start with producing it. And, uh, and they created the, uh, the, the, the Ventra, it's an, it's an Apple site. In 2020, the, the fruit broker, uh, they became a an, uh, an social enterprise. We have a balance sheet that's uh, creating uh, financial capital, social capital, human capital, and nature capital. And this, this is the starting team. Just people down to earth creating uh, uh, value on a farm. But they integrate it with all kinds of programs. And they also created the KPIs for nature inclusive, and because there's a big movement in the Netherlands to build short supply chains with locally food. It's all it's it's everywhere in the Netherlands, especially to become not uh, in, uh, independent. A dependent, sorry, uh, for uh, for long-term uh, supply chains, especially what you see now with Ukraine, it will not harm that that much uh, uh, our society. It will harm uh, uh, Egypt, for example. Um, but to become more independent of long-term supply chains, that's a big, big movement now. Also. Um, uh, 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 supported by the government, but they are supporting, and they are not leading, they are supporting um, short, short, uh, short cycles, short, uh, and, and if you look at it from an economy, economic uh, perspective, um, the transaction costs are lower, because uh, the normally, if you don't trust uh, someone, you will price your uncertainties. The capital um, uh, uh, price also low because what we used here was blended finance for blended value. And blended finance, it's a method that, that you that you bring uh, all kinds of uh, capital together uh, from uh, government. But also from um, uh, from NGOs or uh, um, but also the local uh, community, uh, but also in this industrial uh, capital, just to to mix it and to blend it, and to deal with the dilemmas that normally are in in in, in some of these uh, um, business cases. Uh, this afternoon, I, I will have my board meeting. Uh, we created a regional uh, uh, deal, uh, also in uh, in this area, um, and we raised uh, 50 million um, uh, euros. A, a program of 30 projects, and these projects are also for uh, um, a landscape pro a project, a cooperative bottling supply chain. Uh, an expansion uh, in seeds, so you need to have seeds to really regenerate that landscape and uh, to really raise a uh, short, su short uh, supply um, cooperative. So these kinds of uh, projects are part of a bigger um, um, finance pro program just to make it tangible. And it's really sexy. Yeah, it's 
it's it's award winning in 2018 it's a uh, it's 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 it's, it has the, the publisher prize, but last year was the best cider in the world. So can you really integrate such a product and reshaping a market and an ecosystem? And if you look at impact, because they they measure uh, impact it was a, from the food perspective they they use more than two uh, two thousand uh, kilograms of apples this is how many acres uh, uh, we 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 used and the biodiversity moved on to more than 80, 80 um, species. That's real tangible. And if you look at the metrics, you have target groups on the fruit growers, the agriculture business, the government, the private owners, and business. And then you have the, uh, the spatial uh, perspective, a learning and experience perspective also and your question is about how can you move from system a to b make it learning it's about learning governance so a fruit uh, a fruit tech campus that's part of of this, this system and uh, what's really important to really uh, create a new revenue uh, system it's value, financial uh, returns, and to make it real tangible and transparent. And this is a, a real example. How can you bring the SDGs to a landscape level? The IUCN is one of the, also uh, is an SDG uh, 15. Um, it's they look at landscape development. And the SDGs are really fit for landscape. So then they are tangible. Yeah, because you create, uh, you can measure the energy, water, the soil quality, the biodiversity, new revenue uh, models. Uh, you can use all kinds of financial invest in investment uh, um, innovations like blockchain, uh, the ed education, the housing, labor, social e equity, they land in the landscape. And the regional uh, perspective, it's a beautiful playbook for that. So it's really about sustainable development. It's an approach to progress, to, to do not harm, but to do better, to, to create really a regenerative, uh, uh, positive uh, uh, track. And uh, it, it will, it, it, it it meets the needs of the present but also for, for future generations and uh, especially your children and the children of their children uh, if there is no biodiversity uh, they cannot live because there's a, so much uh, dependency on, on biodiversity so um, this is the region, sorry, it, it, it was shifting. Um, and we plotted the SDGs on the, on the landscape. And uh, it was also one of the projects, and Herman is here, uh, in the, uh, the True Price opens the first uh, price store in Amsterdam. It was uh, two years ago. And um, uh, it was also in that area. Uh, and a region can be a beautiful example of a new market. 
the SDG fit market, but also a new asset class. So if I look at the new business model for the financial world, and Harold was already mentioning that they need to move over to the real economy, the real basic needs, there's a beautiful, beautiful opportunity because these kind of projects take 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 a while. So if you can insure and create uh, a supply chain finance, for example, or a regenerative finance, where 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 different um, uh, financial institutes are cooperating and dealing with uh, risk return and impact collectively because uh, I can help you with your risk if you can help me with, with my risk. That's a different approach that uh, normally we have all, all our own um, uh, spreadsheet and we go, we go for the, low, uh, the lowest risk for our and the highest return in my spreadsheet. spreadsheet. How we created these wind farms is to create an open, open book with on the on the level of the um, the, the spreadsheets. But that that's really about trust. Yeah, because if you have, don't have trust, everyone is in a line of defense. We look at uh, how can can it fit in, uh, the the food mo motor in uh, the SDGs. It's on uh, zero hunger. It's on decent work and economic growth. It's on re responsible consu uh, consu uh, consumption and production. It's on climate action, sustainable cities and communities, and it's on life on land. So it's taking the boxes and especially uh, the financial world and I worked for, for many years in the financial world, the, the financial institutionals say, like pension funds for example, they are looking for portfolios to shift from a current portfolio to a more ESG, SDG portfolio. But we need to innovate and also for you uh, as, a, as, a, as the youngers to really be entrepreneurs, to innovate in a collective action. Some more uh, about um, uh, this, this is the Stockholm Resilience Institute. We are now at an extinction level that we that there need to be action now not in the coming 10 years and i was born in 1972 the first serious book i received from my father i was 14 was the, the, the report of the club of rome it's now 15 years ago it's about modeling it's about System thinking, it's about not about real action. My, um, uh, what I see, we don't have to, to look at these models anymore because we know what's happening. We need to have action, implementation, creating the right conditions, creating the incentives, and really empower entrepreneurs, civil society but also um, uh, the local uh, uh, the communities, but also the government to really make the, make the difference. And if you look at the all compliance in the financial world, it's really hard for, for them to, to be part of these kinds of movements because uh, yeah, they, they, they are not fit for, for change. They are not fit for transition, but we need to help them. 
and we can do it because in only, only in the Netherlands, uh, the investments in reshaping the, this country, it will the whole investment portfolio will be six hundred billions of euros at least for energy transition, affordable housing, food transition. So it's a beautiful opportunity, but you need to create this, an, an, an system and a space that's better than what we have now. And this is also why, because we have, we, are, we have our boundaries. Um, we have our social, social and ecological uh, uh, boundaries, and we need to deal with it. So we need to create new uh, a new playbook, and it's not only based on um, on uh, compliance. No, it's really about about creating new innovative disruptive business value creation. I'm also a teacher at Nairobi University. And in the last 30 years, the focus was on management. I really look at entrepreneurship, regenerative entrepreneurship. And that's different because management is about, and it's really important that management is about effectiveness, efficiency, lean production, and if you look at COVID, uh, all the companies who were fairly into lean, they were not resilient in their supply chains. So there were shocks and there's a, a, a mismatch of your demand and uh, supply. And there's less trust. That is the circular economy describes an economy system that's based on business models business models which replace the end of life concept with reducing alter alternative reusing recycling and recovering materials in production distribution and consum consumption process with the aim to accompli accomplish uh, sustainable development which implies creating environmental quality economic prosperity and social equity to the benefit of the current and future generations. This is a sentence from Marco Hecker, and he's from the University of Utrecht. And he is, his business is on innovation and new markets. So you need to rethink and reshape. Yeah. This is how we see the linear economy, and we need to go to the circular economy it's about recycling uh, sustainable production but also sustainable use and you need to and that's also what, what we did in the in the food uh, uh, motor you need to rethink your business model and this is a beautiful uh, business model for campus uh, uh, too that can really help you to to restructure the business model because an economy is based on on businesses value creation um, and the financial institutes they they serve these uh, these uh, uh, value creation markets and now uh, we are still in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a situation where the financial uh, world is not serving. We are serving the financial world. Uh, Jan Jonker, he's the professor in, in um, multiple value uh, business cases. Um, he says it, it's really about new business modeling. It's about multiple value creation in the business case, yeah. social, ecological, and economic value. It's about shared value creation 
and the business model is collected collectively property like steward owns the one who participates will benefit are you part of it or are you not part of it you need to collectively organize and co-create it in intertwined with your consumer or your community that all corporates and companies but also uh, uh, government they are talking about bringing the consumer in the center but this is really about uh, a centered approach the circular economy is is a is restorative and regenerative by design so if you are aware of the current market system then you can redesign a more regenerative and vital uh, system so you need to have the, the, the competencies in, in place how you make new markets and it's not only a market of, of competition no this is about uh, a, a market in, of value And it also the Ellen MacArthur Foundation has a, an, um, a model for it. it it's, a, it's a butterfly model that you have a whole system for regeneration that can more from the in industrial uh, part of reuse and uh, recycle to more, and this is more the, 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 the cycle of the, the, the bio-based um, uh, regenerative uh, uh, cycle to bring that together. So it's, it's, everything is already there. We only need to implement, implement and make uh, tangible cases. Um, yeah, this is really important. It's about returns. I told you already about risks, but this is really about the uh, returns. So what are the returns of this system? We have four kinds of returns. Returns for natural capital, about biodiversity, uh, less pesticides, cleaner surface water, better drinking water, healthier soils, blah, blah, blah. The other one is return on social capital, collaboration, engagement, learning, employment, etc. And there's a return on financial capital. Higher sales turnover, because did you remember the, the apple? was normally waste now it has value because it, it, it's in a product and the product will be sold and it's the best apple cider in the world so that's that's also a financial return and there's a return on inspiration because this this business model as we speak is, is translated to 40 other agriculture based uh, companies like dairy uh, like um, uh, other kinds of uh, um, uh, farming and they use the same principles so it's a principle based really new kind of business uh, model that's able to um, uh, to scale to scale out to replace Sorry to, to repeat. So, my question is looking at this case, this case study, what kind of questions do you have? I can tell more and more on this, but it's, uh, I really like to hear your, your opinion. Um, you mentioned that. And I'm really curious what 
We, yeah, we, we use it for creating the, the conditions, uh, and learning infrastructure, uh, the, the other one is called the bottling uh, um, supply chain, just to, to really empower and to scale these kinds of uh, um, products that we have. is on value creation. It's the multiple values to create with these kind of products is, is the competition with um, uh, other kinds of apple cider, for example, who, who cannot bring these SDG or ESG values. But it's a different, it's, a, it's a on quality, it's on values, it's, it's a different kind of competition. And it's a, it's a closed chain because uh, the consumers are also part of this uh, cooperative. They own own the, the the value creation. You also mentioned the interest of the state about neighborhood and farms. This is building the same reason. And you also mentioned that fifty percent of the farms are owned by the private. So this means. Uh, it's about the wind farms. Eh? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, the oh, it's, it's, it's very simple. Um, we crowdfunded, it's, it's about um, in totally 11 uh, windmills. Mm -hmm. And they create energy for 60,000 uh, households. And we, uh, we were also the, together with commercial uh, uh, developers. Um, we were the owners of these farms, these wind, uh, wind, uh, windmills, and we invested five million uh, by crowdfunding, with more interest than on the bank, yeah, between five and ten percent. Now normally you have zero on the bank, and then three of us uh, did, uh, did the, the rest of the, uh, the financial part, and we created a business game. Uh, that uh, the uh, of habitat, the the profit doesn't go to the shareholder, but it really goes back to the region. So that's one million a year. One million for a region each year. So that's a fund. You create a fund, and uh, with this fund they invest in, yeah, in all kinds of products. Or, uh, but they also invest in the uh, new uh, um, uh, uh, farm, uh, wind farm, for example, mm -hmm. or heat uh, uh, in the heating system, because the, the gas price is so high, you can you can create your own assets. But it's normally we are used to only focus on okay, I have to earn money so I can buy something. The, the, the real transition is that we can take full responsibility if we 
all, all, all are also part of owning the asset. And that's interesting for the pension funds. What I've learned, they are looking for these kind of cases. But they need volume. They need professional assets management. So to really bring it uh, to a high level, you need to build a portfolio for food, for energy, also for housing, yeah, because the affordable housing in the current business model is really hard. So there will be a mix and uh, the government will, will support and we are building now uh, investment platforms in the Netherlands um, to really create affordable uh, food, energy, um, real estate for your generation and your children, because otherwise it will be really expensive. Are we solving the problem of pricing because it's gonna then goods are gonna represent the, their value, but then also the, the emissions that they result in. But isn't that then gonna like throw the form more on the risk if they can no longer afford those? And how? What are the consequences of that? Yeah. Yeah, in the in the um, food price store, you have two prices: the current price and uh, a price with the externalities in the price, all kinds of externalities. From my perspective, true price can be a bridge to a more regenerative, to become more aware of the, the externalities we are not priced into, the, uh, in, in, into our goods, in, into our economy. Um, so it's, it's an enabler, uh, but we need to think beyond price but it's a beautiful step stepping stone to really uh, uh, move to a, an, an economy that's based on real uh, um, real value but also real uh, uh, negative and positive effects so you will have on i think on thursday you have a, a presentation on true price uh, price and uh, my recommendation is, uh, and, and True Price does that from time to time, uh, Kim Aterbos is going to make a presentation, I think, on this associated with True Price. Uh, self invite yourself to go to a True Price store at the Heinemann Plain on the Plain Amsterdam uh, and, and, and talk to your uh, to, 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 to the staff there and just get a sense what uh, what they're doing and how they do it. it it'll be very inspirational. Uh, and then my biggest lesson in the last 10 years is not to talk about these kinds of things, but really have skin in the game and deal and create value, create new businesses. So we created 20 businesses in the last uh, uh, 10, 10 years. Uh, we raised more than, from the investment perspective, 150 million just to, to build business. Tony Socoloni, uh, you all know now, uh, was created on the basis of the true price methodology. So that, I mean, that is our downstream customer, and you will see how uh, the point with Genesis, uh, you know, at some point in time, you're, you're not competing on value, or no, on prices, but you're competing on value, I mean, better value. And then you create your own market. Yeah. And then you, no. Oh. Part of the market problem of double dealing and sustainability, so I do it in many cases, including Adrian and the Tony Sokolomi, and I have one very big customer creating the big community space um, on Cape Verde. Do you think that this would work in Africa or India or Bulgaria or Romania, where the customer mindset is a bit different than the Dutch one? Because, of course, we're talking about the Dutch um, really entrepreneurial. Ecosystem, but I'm just curious how um, can the impact go beyond? Now, 
beautiful question. From my point of view, the situation in, for example, in Netherlands is much compli more complicated than because we are anti pipeline. End of our our system is not working anymore. But if I my 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 ex-wife she works for um, uh, the Gates Foundation and from uh, Wageningen Wageningen University into Africa. I picked a lot of uh, projects in Africa. They are on the um, beginning of the pipeline. So they don't have to change their uh, market and they have also less uh, uh, um, skin in the game from all kinds of market uh, uh, parties. So if you go to the human level, then this will work everywhere. But you need to create the conditions. Um, uh, and that's, that's, that's um, uh, uh, in every context different. So to really connect with, uh, with the community, it can work. It can work everywhere because people really like to fulfill their basic needs. My only concern is that uh, fuel costs and prices are higher. And there is this huge inequality in uh, terms of social inequality, income inequality. If only the rich people can afford that, then they can buy it. Oh, they don't care about sustainability, green products, water for instance. But the mass population would love to do that, but they cannot afford it. They have to pay, especially now with the electricity bills, oxygen is quite expensive. Or I'm just curious how does that work? Yeah, the, you need to focus not on the part, purely the financial part, but on the value creation part. Uh, and normally, we only look at price, but this is really about uh, added value. And um, from an entrepreneurial perspective, you need you you can create value uh, and the if the community is owning the, 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 the business, then uh, there's a stabilization uh, of, the, of, the, of the price. And in the Netherlands, we have a beautiful example of the Herenboere. People are buying a farm, owning a farm, and they have a stable price for their food. 10 euros each week for one month. One month. That's a beautiful. So they stabilized and there's no volatility. Because normally on market prices, uh, global market prices, there's a volatility in, in the price. And it's really hard for Egypt, for example, to, to really create uh, their own uh, um, uh, agriculture. Because they need to compete with these prices. So it's, it needs to shift from monetizing to value creation. Yeah, if I may add to that, I think it's, it's the core question that you have to take a broader perspective. Yes, there are a lot of food prices may be higher than market prices, and that raises rightfully so the question of affordability for the consumer. If you think of the unfairness or injustice at the beginning of this pipeline, that we are paying prices which do not guarantee offer a living income to the people, it's a pipeline. That's another type of fairness, and that comes back to what, what, what Dennis is saying about value. And I think that's the consumer needs to have value. Now, to the extent it becomes really unaffordable, and, uh, and we need to discuss it with Tim as well. I hope that we with Tim Price will be able to restructure the value chains of products in such a way that the food price is not higher than the current price. Because then those people who, who could not afford paying a higher food price will buy into the value proposition. So that's your mission. One last one, maybe, and then we end the session. Um, so, many of the projects are financed. Uh,
well, are, are held by cooperatives, right? And the cooperative, like the, the citizen or a member, you pay like an entry fee and then you're part of the cooperative. And then the cooperative is going to go see a bank or a financial institution to get a loan, and then they're going to finance the project. So a cooperative doesn't need to make profit by definition, right? Compared to what Scott holding like uh, a firm that should talk to the shareholders. Well, how does this uh, corporate uh, structure change the way these projects need to deliver results? The fact that there's no um, requirement to make profit because I mean, your members are not waiting for return on their savings. It's not like a way for them to invest uh, part of the corporate. And sometimes corporates are held by workers, so it's better than they're providing a job. Sometimes corporates are uh, the members are the consumers of the product. Uh, that's what we did um, in this area with the uh, audit firms. So we did it together with uh, uh, corporates, um, real co commercial uh, uh, developers. And um, uh, what I see and what we see is that if you look at a region, you have a, a different kinds of uh, assets with high returns, financial returns, and with low uh, financial returns. So the wind farms they have, hope, they have high financial returns. So you can bring that to uh, to projects and business cases in your portfolio <coughs> that, that has high uh, natural capital uh, uh, returns or social uh, returns. So it's it's really about portfolio and to bring what I see. Uh, I work a lot with with corporates like I'm known uh, everywhere. They also are changing their business model. To really engage with uh, these kinds of uh, regenerative regions, they need to look at their, um, their their business model and really. And normally, uh, uh, the most of the corporates they have an extracting business model, mm -hmm. so it's really important. That also Paul Paul Pullman, his biggest challenge was to to have um, a, a different playing field. And also a dialogue with your uh, shareholders. And normally, the share, most shareholders are all, almost only looking at the financial returns. But what I see, and I work also for family offices worldwide, is that there is becoming a more balanced um, uh, um, uh, return uh, playing field. So that also the uh, and the pension funds are really important for this because. My parents, they, 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 they are now in their pension uh, um, part of their life. And there's no index in the last 10 years. So the prices, uh, and especially now uh, there's uh, inflation, the prices are, low, are, are very high. So they need to, to fulfill in their basic needs in a way because they are becoming poorer and poorer. So if you bring that kind of um, uh, asset ownership, uh, to fulfill in the basic needs, then you can, can have lower uh, returns financial, financially because there's security. So uh, uh, in, in the last 20 years, uh, the, 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 the pension funds, they were looking to a new model for fulfilling a an, an good old day. And part of these uh, strategic sessions was to fulfill the, the, the basic needs for housing, for um, uh, health, yeah, for example. Uh, because if you only focus on, on, on the, the, the finance part, yeah, the prices can be sky high, as we see it now. And you cannot eat your money. Yeah. Yeah, like, long, long, long. Yeah, my first, I think we go uh, in the same direction is masters of business administration is old school. You need to be a master of business innovation. If I would be 40 years, 50, no, 50 years younger, I want to do an MBA, I would say no, I do an MBI. Because that's what this what this is all about, business innovation. And and coming back to this this question in the beginning, there was no path until someone started walking, and then someone followed, and then in the end it became a highway. 
Well, if you have a purpose and you have a direction, start walking. No doubt, others will follow. That's what the Prague model did. There was no Prague model before the Prague model. There was no sustainable finance before sustainable finance movement started. In the beginning, there was no power until it became a highway. I'm just curious. see and I am always about hope is that this is a beautiful uh, momentum now because there's awareness of the current uh, fragility in the system and there's traction really innovation power that's also uh, now uh, in, in the Netherlands but also in Europe so we can use this mo momentum to create more resilience resilience on the basic needs and from an SP perspective, we see that, it, that it, it's, it's a beautiful momentum to really accelerate. But it, 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 it needs to be guided because otherwise um, there, there, it's a bumping, bumping, bumping road. And so there needs to be a containment um, uh, and we need to create time and space. So, uh, from my perspective, we need to, to, to create an insurance to, to walk this, this path. That's really important. And with, we, with this momentum, it's a beautiful, it's an, an, a 9 11 or a Pearl Harbor, it's a beautiful momentum for a shift. Thank you very much. Thank you.